right, well, I'm here day four of Blister mm -hmm. Summit 2023 with mm -hmm. Alex Cernuciari from Deuter, and we're going to dive into a bunch about packs and everything else, but I think uh, we were both out taking some turns today. How's your how's your summit experience been? Yeah, uh, it's been a fantastic summit. So we you know really appreciate uh, the whole blister crew putting this on, and it's uh, yeah been fantastic. And we're looking forward to coming back next year. Awesome and good snow. Yeah, and great snow. Oh, it was fabulous this morning. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's just dive into a bit about your role with mm -hmm. Deuter and just talk a bit about uh, maybe Deuter as a company. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I am the U.S. marketing manager for Deuter. Um, Deuter has been around since 1898 in some form or another. Uh, mm -hmm. starting out with making tents uh, and then uh, within the first 20 years moving into backpacks um, and so we do a whole full line of technical packs um, if it's an activity you can do outdoors we will make a pack for it excellent and so I guess today we're going to be talking specifically about ski packs yes um, so where do you want to start uh, well for new for 2022 2023 so out this year um, available online on doiter.com we have the outproof series uh, it started with the outproof light uh, in a 22 liter size as well as a 20 SL size um, and then an outproof uh, standard pack uh, at 32 liters or a 30 in the SL size um, so doiter uh, started off uh, in with uh, I guess Dorder invented the women's pack um, about 20 years ago now. Uh, you know, it was led by a team of uh, female mountaineers uh, from across the globe, and they were pulled together by our headquarters and started to really develop packs to fit smaller body types. Um, so yeah, if you have short, uh, short torso, you know, narrower shoulders, definitely check out the SLs um, for sure. Um, but then with the Outproof specifically, uh, it is Deuter's first airbag pack uh, <laughs> since the ABS days. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to go with the uh, Alpride E2 system in this pack. Um, it's incredibly, uh, you know, it's a pretty incredible system for, uh, for an airbag. Uh, we're really excited to be able to partner with Alpride on it. Um, it features a 162 liter bag. Um, so not to get too technical, but you know, the larger the airbag itself, uh, the more float you have. And that's a good thing. You know, you want to make yourself as large as possible. Um, if you're small, you will, um, sadly sink to the bottom of an avalanche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people actually like the technical information. So, uh, yeah. let's just talk a bit, I guess, about maybe the specifics of that system and kind of how it's integrated into the pack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is uh, super capacitor based. Uh, so you can charge the super capacitor through USB-C. Um, and that's what really allows us to use these fan based systems. Um, it, it allows um, an incredible charge to be dispensed uh, instantaneously to the fan. Um, and then it's inflated in four seconds, which is the industry standard. Um, from there, there's also a double A battery backup. So if you are caught in a secondary avalanche or you need to travel out of avalanche terrain that day. Um, it takes about 25 minutes to a half hour for those double A's to top off uh, the, uh, the system uh, once you deploy it from the supercapacitor. Excellent. Yeah, it's good to have a mm -hmm. secondary system. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, a big change from the old canister days, that's for sure. Definitely. Um, well, then, I guess also before we head into some of the other features of the pack, for those mm -hmm. who may not have thought about like a women specific fit before, I know you mentioned mm -hmm. smaller torsos. Is there anything else that you kind of want to highlight there as far as... Uh, what makes a women's pack more comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it also features a conical shaped hip fin. So we tip the, fi the hip fins in slightly, um, just giving a better lock on the hips um, and better weight distribution into, uh, you know, into the trunk of the body. Um, it does also uh, feature sh uh, narrower straps and they are placed slightly closer together as well. Um, again, for that smaller body type that has narrower shoulders. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, what, are, what other features do you want to talk about here with the Outproof yeah. packs. Absolutely. So the Outproof was developed from uh, the new Freerider, um, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, so it's an incredibly comfortable pack. Um, it's really hard to sort of convey that or measure that, which drives the Germans crazy. <laughs> um, but um, they just carry really incredibly well. And since uh, they're designed to really keep as much of the weight against your back as possible, they just ski absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, the, the feedback from our athlete team is that they're the most comfortable airbag packs that they've ever worn and that they don't even feel like they are carrying, you know, the, the safety system inside. Um, so that was, you know, sort of of critical importance to us because if you don't take the back out because it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you 
aren't staying as safe as you could be. Um, from there, there's just also some easy to use features. Um, of course, you know, the quick stowing handle so that when the system is armed, you don't accidentally deploy it. Okay. Um, there is uh, the leg safety strap as well, stows into the right hip fin um, so that if you do use it in bounds, um, you know, especially if you're riding a lift to some slack country with, you know, the 22 perhaps, mm -hmm. um, it's easy for that to get caught. And so that way there's a nice quick stowage system. Nice. Um, and then it's also, uh, features a carabiner to a bar tacked loop um, on the front of the hip fin. Um, it's much easier to take on and off than the old days of trying to feed the little loop through your hip belt strap and then you don't know, go through with a metal buckle. Awesome. Um, what do we have going on here? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ice axe or pole carry uh, for split borders. Um, the packs also do feature uh, an innovative helmet net, uh, mm -hmm. which is not something I ever thought I'd say, but it is uh, effectively a double walled helmet net. Uh, it does fully detach, um, so it can um, uh, serve just as a helmet bag too if you are traveling. Um, but since it is effectively a bag uh, with mesh, it's also been incredible for drying wet gear. Mm -hmm. um, if you're out there on a really snowy day and your gloves get soaked, um, you can at least stash them on the outside and hopefully get them to start to dry out a little bit better than if they were crammed in a pack with all your other gear. Yeah, that's a nice feature. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, I guess maybe just differentiate why someone might go between like the 22 or the 30. I, I noticed mm -hmm. that there's like one main compartment versus several compartments and just kind of some of the differences among the packs there. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, as I slightly mentioned, you know, the 22 is probably going to be for a really quick day tour, um, you know, dawn patrol type situation um, or slack country too. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, if you don't have that much vert, if you can ski back around and get on a lift and have a shorter hike, which you are going out of bounds, um, that's probably where you'll see the 22 um, be used. Uh, the 32 is just the day pack, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we see a lot of packs. Um, backcountry packs come in at this size. Yeah. It's pretty perfect. Um, yeah, and then there are just a couple extra compartments, assuming you'll have more gear, um, just some more organization as well. Uh, and then for 23, 24, so coming out uh, this upcoming fall, we have the uh, Outroof Tour, mm. uh, which is a 38 plus five. Um, so good, some good of the guides. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also going to be a 36 plus five SL. Mm. Um, some folks who are familiar with our backpacking packs know that we often do expandable collars mm -hmm. to add volume. Um, so fantastic hut pack as well. Yeah. Um, and sort of, you know, a multi-day pack because you can expand the roll top as you get to your hut, maybe add in your food, that extra layer, your sleeping bag on top, and then you can drop those items off and then go skiing for the day push the pack back down and you're back to a great skiing pack. Yeah, that's good versatility, mm -hmm. a single pack. And then uh, what about, I mean, do you want to highlight anything as far as the materials go and the construction of these packs? Yeah, so they all use recycled fabrics. Um, you know, it's, we like to lowball, we will say 50%. It's usually quite a significant amount more than that. Um, we don't always go with 100% for durability concerns. Uh, we have a lifetime guarantee on all of our packs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we will fix it as best we can. And if we can't fix it, um, you know, we will replace it and we will make sure that we do right by our customers. Um, that is still to say, you know, the fabric is all blue sign approved. Um, so we, you know, strive after the, uh, the most stringent standards in the industry. Very nice. All right. Well, what do we have up next with the Freerider? Mm -hmm. So the Freerider is uh, Deuter's longest running ski pack. Um, been through several generations now. Um, famously bulletproof. Uh, you often see them on the backs of patrollers. Um, you know, almost a decade plus old. Um, so it's, you know, we decided this year in this last update uh, that came out in the uh, 21 winter season um, to start to reduce the weight and really make it a great skiing pack and really improve that ski ability. Um, so there's uh, significantly lighter weight, uh, more lighter weight materials. Uh, we decided to, um, you know, bring those lighter weight materials in, but, um, you know, our fantastic product team managed to, uh, keep the same durability. Um, I have tried with poles, axes, and just about everything you can imagine in all backcountry equipment to tear holes in this. Um, my dog has also tried to tear holes in this back, um, to no avail. Um, so we're really stoked to see that. Yeah, we were able to shave, um, at least half a pound, if not even sometimes closer to a pound off the packs, um, while maintaining just their legendary durability and uh, skiable character. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so then I guess just maybe speak to a couple of the differences between the two packs we're looking at here. Absolutely. Uh, so on the left, we have the Freerider Pro. Um, this is the SL version. Um, 
uh, it features uh, the same expanding roll top as that outproof tour. Um, so it does add five liters. Again, if you are headed into a hut um, or just if you need a place to stash that extra puffy um, at the start of your tour, mm -hmm. um, uh, it just gives you some extra volume. We, uh, The Pro model also does feature um, a draining skin pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the diagonal zipper on the outside, on the front of the pack, um, does drain out. Mm -hmm. So if you have wet skins, um, you know, for spring tours, hopefully you can, uh, you know, reduce the glop on your way up um, by starting to dry out your skins. You don't need to carry them on you either, getting your layers wet and, yes. you know, potentially getting cold um, after that. Um, besides that, you know, just classic ski pack features, A-frame ski carry, uh, of course, an external avalanche uh, safety pocket. Um, it does do a diagonal ski, ski carry. There's a modular strap system included, uh, of course, helmet net included, um, you know, to be able to uh, sort of make your tour as pleasant as possible and let you carry your gear in, in the most comfortable way uh, without having it on you. The free rider comes in a 30. Um, it's a great daily driver. It's a great do anything pack. Um, it's great inbounds with its slightly slimmer profile. Uh, it's, you know, obviously that 30 liter size is fantastic. Um, out of bounds as well um, for day, uh, day tours. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit less feature driven. There's not that roll top. There's still, um, there's not a draining skin pocket. It just has the avalanche safety compartment. Um, but still, you know, a little bit, uh, just a little bit of everything. All right, well, another series of packs. What do we have here? Uh, so these two packs are for uh, more uphill enthusiasts, I would say. Um, on the right, we have uh, the Up Days. Uh, so that's going to be new for 23-24. Uh, um, it is uh, an uphill ski touring pack. Um, so it does have some schemo features. It certainly can be raced, but it's probably a slightly larger size than for just a single day race. Um, there is, of course, a quick fix system um, for those transitions to boot packs. Uh, we do also have a skin or crampon pocket um, that is reinforced on the bottom. Uh, it is Velcro, so it rips open incredibly easily. Uh, it will come with a bottle holder for the front of the pack as well. Um, it fits our flasks. It fits most flasks we tried, um, as well as your standard 20, 22 ounce bike bottle. Awesome. Um, yeah, insulated as well. So hopefully we'll keep your drink from freezing if it's not salty enough. <laughs> um, then a main compartment, you know, uh, for your gear. Um, this does use recycled materials, extremely lightweight fabrics all around, uh, a lightweight foam back system um, that is removable if you do need to shed, you know, every single ounce uh, for your race. Mm -hmm. um, but besides that, you know, it's just trying to be as comfy as possible and just, you know, make it make you forget that it's there while you uh, are maybe suffering a little bit uphill. <laughs> Um, it will come in three sizes. Uh, it will be a 20 liter, um, and then a 24 SL and a 26. Okay. Um, so yeah, wide range of sizes, you know, maybe for some longer uphill tours as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm sure there was a bit there as far as like trying to keep it really comfortable, but also shaving weight. Do we have a, mm -hmm. do you know the weight on this guy or maybe some of the design features that went into keeping it a pretty lightweight pack? Absolutely. Um, weight, I will have to get to. Maybe we can put it in the, uh, in the description section, put all the weights for these. Um, shoulder straps just feature minimal padding. Um, they're also heavily perforated. Um, you can see it's just a very large uh, hole opening for ventilation, and then it also does reduce a significant yeah. amount of weight. Uh, cutouts on the hip belt as well. Um, and then all the fabrics are uh, pretty much as light as we can go uh, without sacrificing durability. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then next to it, we have something that's quite a bit bigger. Yes. Let's get into that. Uh, that is the uh, Pro model in our Freescape series. So mm -hmm. it is the Freescape Pro 40 plus. Um, it does, that plus does, you know, denote, of course, that expanding collar. Um, so again, if you have a really massive ob objective, um, definitely more on the ski mountaineering side, um, you're going to hop into our Freescape series. Uh, it does also come uh, in a light model, which is a 24 SL and a 26. Um, that's, you know, for really quick missions, um, another good option for a Dawn Patrol pack as well. Um, uh, uh, and these are trying to balance feature set and weight. Um, so, uh, as you can see, uh, you know, double ice axe carry compared to the Alp roofs or the free rider single ice axe carry. Um, there are, uh, hitches everywhere, uh, that you can use with the included straps for strapping down crampons, even Z pads, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, you can use the straps too for diagonal ski carry uh, or A-frame ski carry, depending on what you prefer. Um, you know, the uh, 
the brain of the pack, the, the top of the pack, uh, does expand up quite significantly if you are carrying a rope. There's an integrated rope carrying system in both of these packs. Um, yeah, so they're made for some, you know, really big objectives. Um, would be a great pack for here in the Elks in the backcountry if you are trying to, you know, summit and then ski down. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you just want to speak to the materials used for these packs? Yeah, of course. Uh, so they do do both use recycled materials um, and all of the fabric um, in the packs is uh, up to the blue sign standard as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some more options. I mean, these ones seem a little bit more specifically geared towards certain objectives or missions, but uh, it's nice to have that well-rounded lineup. So thanks for walking us through it. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. <laughs>